Hello everyone, this is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs and today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a little dog snood or cowl for your dog. Now this pattern will fit any size dog or pet and I'll explain that to you in just a little bit. The pattern uses Red Heart Super Saver Worsted Weight Number 4 yarn and you can use any worsted weight number 4 yarn that you want for this project. For this one I use the new Red Heart Super Saver Stripes and this color is called Bright Stripes and this size here fits my Rosie. She has a 9 inch neck and this one fits a friend's dog who's a little bitty Yorkie who only has about a 6 inch neck. This one is made out of the Red Heart Gumdrop and this color is called Licorice. For today's demonstration, I'm going to be using this soft white fleck, also Red Heart Super Saver. And I really like to use the Red Heart Super Saver yarns when I'm making things for the dogs because they do wash up well. We're going to be using, um, let me see here, our 5.5 millimeter eye hook. And usually when I'm using worsted weight number four, I use an H, but I want this to be a little bit more open and stretchy and easy to put on your dog. So we are using the eye hook. You'll need a pair of scissors and of course a needle for weaving in your ends. This is a free crochet pattern on my blog. It's called the Black Light Dog Cowl. Because the first pattern, that when I wrote it, I used Red Heart Super Saver Black Light Yarn. And it is a gorgeous yarn as well. I'll put that blog link right down in the, underneath the video in the notes. So we need to have worsted weight number four yarn. The amount depends on what size you're making from about one to three ounces or even more if you're making it for a bigger dog. So keep that in mind when choosing your yarns. So the first thing that you need to do is measure your dog's neck. To measure your dog's neck, just loosely place the tape measure around their neck. And you can also go by their collar size. Rosie's neck measures approximately nine inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply times three because three chains or three double crochets equal one inch. So three times nine is 27. And then we're going to add five chains just so that the snood slips on comfortably and fits her neck. So for to make it fit any size dog, three times their neck measurement plus five chains. Good girl, Rosie. So Rosie's neck measures nine inches. You need to chain three chains per inch plus an additional five chains. So for Rosie's neck, three times nine is 27 plus five chains gives me a total of 32 chains that I need to chain. And you'll need to figure that out for your size dog or pet. So to begin, we need to make our slip knot and chain 32. Now remember, this is the size for Rosie's neck. I stitched my 32 chains and now being very careful not to twist our chain and I just lay it out like this if possible to keep from twisting we go right in that very first chain and we pull a loop through there and through that first loop that's on our hook and chain one. Now we're going to be stitching half double crochets all the way around. This chain one here does not count as a stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to place one half double crochet in each chain around. So we're going to yarn over, 
go in that next chain and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through all three of those loops. That's a half double crochet. And I like the half double crochet when the double crochet seems too tall and when a single crochet seems too short. The half double crochet is a nice in-between stitch. So yarn over, go through the next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through all three of those loops. So we're going to place one half double crochet in each of the chains around. We'll be working all the way around our chain and then when we get back to here we're going to join to the top of our first half double crochet. So just to repeat our first row is one half double crochet in each chain around then join to the top of the first half double crochet. I stitched one half double crochet in each of the chains around and now I'm going to join to the top of that first half double crochet with a slip stitch. So we just pull a loop through and we go through the next loop and we're going to chain one. Now for the next two rows we're just going to place one half double crochet in each half double crochet around and join. So we're going to go right in that first stitch and stitch a half double crochet and we'll be stitching two rows of one half double crochet in each half double crochet around because what we're doing is we're stitching the top three rows in half double crochet. There's that one and then this one, the top three rows of half double crochets. That's the neck band. So again to repeat, one half double crochet in each half double crochet around. I join to the top of the first half double crochet chain one. Then we'll repeat one half double crochet and each half double crochet around and then we'll join. So here's my three rows of half double crochet. I need to join to the top of the first half double crochet and on this one we're not going to chain one, we're going to chain three. And we're going to be making two double crochets together, skip the next two double crochets together and skip the next. So we're going to begin our chain three counts as our first double crochet and then we're going to make a double crochet in the same stitch as that chain three. So yarn over, go in that same stitch and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through the first two, yarn over and go through the second two. Now we're going to skip this next half double crochet and then we're going to place two double crochets in the next. So we chained three, we double crocheted in the same stitch. We, ch we skipped the next half double crochet and then we stitched two double crochets in the next stitch and this is the way this next row, row four, will work. So we're going to yarn over, we're going to skip the next stitch and stitch two double crochets, whoops, there we go, in the next stitch. Skip the next half double crochet and two double crochets in the next stitch. And we'll do this all the way around, skip, and two double crochets. Some more yarn out here. Alrighty, let me take a look at this for you. This is how it should look. Now we're not putting any 
chains between any of the stitches it's two double crochets skip one two double crochets skip one two double crochets skip one all the way around and then we'll join to the top of this chain three when we get back around and this is just setting up the base for our V stitches now our V stitches are are just two double crochets there will not be any chain one in between so two double crochets skip the next stitch two double crochets skip the next stitch all the way around join to the top of the chain three so this is how it should look at this point we have our three rows of half double crochet and then we did our two double crochets together skipping a stitch in between join to the top of our chain three with a slip stitch and now the way the rest of the rows are going to work until we reach our bottom band is exactly the same way as this row that we're getting ready to make so your first two double crochets go in between pull up a loop and chain three this counts as our first double crochet now we're going to double crochet in that same space between the first two double crochets now we're going to go to the next two double crochets that we stitched together and we're going to stitch two double crochets right in between those two double crochets and this is forming a v-stitch now it's not the traditional v-stitch with the chain in between it's just two double crochets in between the it, the next two double crochets this is how that it will look there's no chain one in between the v-stitches there's no chain one in between the double crochets it's basically the same as this row only replacing those two double crochets in between the next two double crochets so I'm going to go to the next set of double crochets right here and I'm going to yarn over and go in between and stitch a double crochet and then stitch another double crochet in that same space we'll do this all the way around and this row is the way the next few rows will be made just going to the next set of two double crochets together we yarn over and stitch two double crochets right in that space between the next two double crochets and this is how it will begin to look we'll do this all the way around and then we'll join to the top of that first chain three so this is how it should look after our second row of non-traditional V stitches and we're going to continue to stitch just exactly like we did this row for as many rows as needed now if you're going to make it the size as Rosie's I'm doing a total of 10 rows so one two three four five so I need to do five more rows of the V stitches and so it's up to you how many rows you want to make it the smaller one I didn't do as many rows but I have done them for dogs that are have, like a greyhound that has a longer neck and so you're going to need to decide how long you want this on your dog or pet and you can do as many rows as you want or not it's totally up to you and your dog so let's do our rows and let's remember how we did the last row we go in between the first two double crochets pull up a loop and chain three then we double crochet in that same space between the first two double crochets and that's our first V stitch then we double crochet in the space between each of the double crochets whoops there we go yarn got a little splitty around so 
there's no chain in between there's no chain in the center two double crochets in between each of the double crochets all the way around and for as many rows as you need to fit your dog or pet And just remember, when we come back around, we're going to join to the top of the chain three. And we'll repeat this row for as many rows as needed, like I already said, for your dog or pet. This is how it should look up through row 10. And you can see those V stitches, how nicely they look. This, of course, is the front the, where our face goes our dog's face goes. <laughs> you could make this for yourself, just make it bigger. Here's our three rows of half double crochets and then our V-stitch rows. And I really love the way that this looks. Now, if this isn't long enough and you wanna add more rows of V-stitches, go right ahead. Remember, every dog has a different shaped head and neck. And of course, dogs are shaped kinda of weird, so every one of them is different and we have to make it to fit that pet. All right, so now we're ready to put the bottom band on, and we're going to be putting three rows of half double crochet like we did here. So what we're going to do is just chain one, and then we're gonna place one half double crochet in each stitch around. And the best way to figure out how to put your stitches in when you've done something different besides an even row is to go by the braid that's on the top of your edge. And so what you would do is just place one half double crochet right in the top of each one of those stitches. And we're going through both loops. And we're going to stitch one half double crochet in each stitch around and then join to the top of the first half double crochet that we stitched, a little string there. And what you'll notice is as we stitch this row, it'll pull it in a little bit because it, it came out a little, which is what we wanted with our V stitches. And now it's gonna kind of pull the tube of the shape back in just a little so that it stays on your pooch or cat or goat or whatever animal you're making this for. So it stays on their head. So we're going to stitch one half double crochet in each stitch around, working all the way around, and then join with a slip stitch to the very first half double crochet that we stitched. And this is sort of what I was talking about. Um, it came out a little and now it's going to go back in as we stitch our last rows of half double crochet. So I stitched the one, and now we're just gonna stitch two more rows. We're gonna chain one half double crochet in that first half double crochet, and then place one half double crochet in each of the half double crochets around. And then we'll do this for two rows, and then we'll tie off, and I'll show you how to make the tie to add to the top. So, one half double crochet in each half double crochet around, join to the first half double crochet, and then repeat. So we have a total of three rows of half double crochets. Here are my three rows of half double crochet. I'm gonna to join to the top of my half double crochet with a slip stitch, and I'm going to tie off. Now the snood or cowl would probably stay on, but just in case, I like to add ties. I'm just putting my ends inside and I'll weave those in a little bit later. But this is what the snood looks like. This is your neck band up here. This is the body of the snood. And then we have the face band. Now on this one, 
I chose to add a couple of pony beads onto the ends of my ties. On this one, I chose to add some polymer clay beads that I had on hand that were colorful that I thought would look good with this. Now, you can just make your chain uh, for your tie and add beads on if you want to. But the one that I'm going to do today, we're going to add a pom-pom on each end of the ties. And I've already made one little pom-pom. It's just a loose little pom-pom. And I'll show you how to do that. What we're going to do is we're just going to wrap the yarn. Um, first, let's cut a piece of yarn so we'll have one ready. So we're going to have that ready. And then we're going to take the yarn and just wrap it around our three fingers about 20 to 25 times. All right. So now we have a loop. I'm going to cut that off. We're going to take this piece that we already have ready and just stick it through our loop loops like that and I'm just going to tie a couple of knots to hold it. Tie one more because I don't want my pom-pom to come undone. And then I'm going to take the end of it and pull it forward and then I'm going to cut off the end. And be careful not to cut your hand. And that makes a nice fluffy pom-pom. Now, if you want it a little bit shorter, you can cut it a little shorter. And I sort of go like this and check, make sure I got all the loops cut. And you can add as many uh, wraps of yarn that you want to if you want your pom-pom to be bigger. So now I have two pom-poms. Let's move my mess. And we need to make the chain for our tie. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of yarn at the end before I start so I have a place to tie my pom-pom on. So we're going to make our slip knot and then we're going to chain about 55 chains. Now if you made it smaller you're probably not going to want to chain as many chains. If you made it bigger you may want to chain more. Just keep in mind that if the chain is too long and gets in the way of the dog he might chew on it and cats might find it something fun to play with <laughs> especially if it's a pom-pom <laughs> so just keep that in mind when making your tie for your cow i made my tie i've got my two pom-poms and i'm ready to add them to my cowl or snood whichever way you want to call it so the first thing we need to do uh, here is to decide if where we want the front of our snood to be. And I'm just going to put my front right here. And something that I do is I stick my crochet hook in backwards. And I'm going to go through every two stitches. Working around towards the back. And then I'm going to grab my chain that I made and just gently ease that through. There we go. All right. And then I'll keep going, putting my crochet hook in backwards, going through every two stitches. And I'll continue doing this till I get around to the front of my snood. Almost there. All right, a few more stitches. There we go. All right, so now I've got my tie on. That's simple. And you know, you can have your tie set to the front, to the side, however is easiest for you to get it on your dog. All right, so now we need to add our pom-poms. And what I do is I take those two long strings and the string that's on here, and I just tie them together 
like that and just tie a knot. Nice and tight and then I tie one more knot. Make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Be careful not to grab any of those little strings. And then I take it, these leftover pieces of string, and I just cut them so that they're even with the pom-pom that I just put on. And then it's not going to fall off. Let's do the other one the same way. We're just going to wrap them around. Bring it up close. Make another knot. And then we'll make another knot. For some reason, I think three knots hold the best. All right, I'm giving it a good tight pull. I'll pull those that way. And cut those so that they blend right in. And there's our snood. Pull this tight. You can tie this in a bow or a knot or however it makes it easiest. Just remember, you don't want it hanging down to get caught in puppy toenails or in puppy mouths. <laughs> so this is our black light dog cow.